Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us today on Ludicrous Feed. We're sitting in our 2019 Tesla Model 3 Performance. We just received software update 2022.36.2. And let's go through all the release notes. It's a huge update, so plenty to get through today. The first one is the Energy app. Let's go through it right now. Learn more about your vehicle's energy consumption with the updated Energy app. You can now monitor the amount of energy used while driving and parked, see how much energy is consumed by different vehicle components, driving behaviors and environmental conditions, view energy used in comparison to trip projection and the battery indicator, receive personalized suggestions for using energy more efficiently. And we'll go through in detail each feature after I go through all the release notes. The next one is Sentry Mode Live Camera Access. This is one that's uh, been long awaited here in Australia. So let's go through it. View your car's surroundings from the Tesla app when parked to confirm the safety of your environment before returning to your car. Live camera is end-to-end -end encrypted and cannot be accessed by Tesla. To enable or disable, tap controls safety view live camera via mobile app from the touchscreen display. Note this feature requires premium connectivity. And we'll go through that, of course, later on. Cabin overheat protection. Choose the activation temperature for cabin overheat protection according to your preferences by tapping controls, safety, cabin overheat protection. Tesla app, view additional media player details and the ETA or estimated time to arrival to a destination when a route is active from the Tesla mobile app with version 4.13.0. Dynamic brake lights. When driving over 50 kilometers an hour and brakes are applied forcefully, the brake lights will now flash quickly to warn other drivers about the sudden decrease in speed. When coming to a complete stop, the hazard warning lights will flash until they are manually turned off or if the accelerator is pressed. This is very handy and uh, certainly something to look out for if uh, you brake suddenly. Other drivers will know what's happening. Supercharger additional details. The redesigned supercharger map pop-up will now display historical site occupancy in addition to the associated charging fees when available. To view these details, tap on any supercharger pin that is in the vicinity of your vehicle. This is also very handy to know when are peak times for your nearest supercharger location. Car left open notifications. Car left open notifications will now notify you when the doors have been accidentally left unlocked. And new language support. You can now select Lithuanian as your touchscreen language. To update your language settings, tap controls, display, and select your preferred language from the touchscreen language drop down menu. Good to see Tesla supporting more languages as time goes on. Okay, and now to do the live sentry mode demonstration, which is what I'm sure you've all been waiting to see, and it's finally in Australia, which is great. So go to uh, controls, safety, and make sure this is selected, view live camera via mobile app. Let's have a look at what this says. Live camera allows you to remotely view your car's surroundings when parked for additional security and convenience. For example, you can view your car's environment before returning or see if you missed a parking meter after you walked away. It's quite handy. When in use, the car's headlights will pulse and the touchscreen will show that sentry mode is activated. Please note it is your sole responsibility to consult and comply with all local regulations and property restrictions regarding video recordings. A live camera is end-to-end -end encrypted and cannot be accessed by Tesla. And uh, importantly, you must be out of your vehicle and you must uh, have all windows and doors uh, closed as well when you activate this uh, live sentry mode. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, so there is our Tesla Model 3 looking at us there, and we'll do this live sentry mode demonstration. And uh, we'll just go to security and drivers there. All right, so sentry mode is activated, as you can see, it's uh, toggled there in blue. Let's go to view live camera. There you go, you can see the car headlights flick and pulse. And you should be able to see me very soon. There we are. Hello, everyone. Definitely live. You can see me waving there. Testing one, two. I'm going to raise my right hand. There you go. 
it's no Photoshop, uh, no tricks. It's just working very well in Australia, which is great. There you go, that's the uh, left repeater, right repeater. Then you can go to the rear camera as well. There we are. And that is the live camera. Fascinating. The resolution is okay. It's really designed just for checking briefly when you are out and about and you forgot something or you want to check on the car if the entry mode's been activated. All right, let's take a look at the energy app improvements. This is really quite fascinating now. And uh, let's click on the energy tab there. You can also access it through this uh, button there and energy pops up there. You can do that as well. Uh, let's go back to that. Okay, so I went on a bit of a drive before uh, doing this software update video. And I'll just show you, so before it was just this consumption graph here, but now there's a bit more information. You can now uh, have a live view of your consumption. Uh, if you've got a trip planned in the navigation, you get a live view like this. And I took some photographs as well uh, during the drive. And uh, you can also do a uh, trip so this is uh, against a navigation uh, predicted trip and consumption and also rated. And uh, I'll read you what this says. It says, uh, compare actual energy consumption against Model 3's rated consumption, which is based on standardized driving conditions set by the EPA, which is the US uh, rating system for range. If navigation is active, a comparison to trip planners predicted consumption based on the driving style route and weather is also available some information here. So driving, so these are the categories here, driving, climate, battery conditioning, elevation, and everything else. Let's go through each one. So driving, energy used to move Model 3 and overcome factors such as wind resistance and tire rolling resistance, cruising at lower motorway speeds, accelerating gradually, using regenerative braking, keeping tires properly inflated, closing windows, and removing unused accessory racks can all help save energy. Towing, trailering or driving with additional passengers or cargo can increase the energy required to reach your destination. So that's all very good tips on how to improve your range. Climate, energy consumed by the climate control system, temperature adjustment, fan speed and seat conditioning all affect this consumption. Choosing efficient climate control settings like making your cabin set temperature closer to the temperature outside can help you save energy. That's all very much common sense. Battery conditioning, energy consumed to optimize Model 3's battery temperature for all weather conditions to improve range, peak performance and supercharging speed. Elevation, energy consumed or gained during the elevation changes. Additional energy is needed to travel uphill and can be gained from regenerative braking when driving downhill. Energy can also be saved due to decreased air density when driving at high altitudes. That's interesting. So uh, decreased air density uh, can also help improve range as well. And everything else, energy consumed to charge personal electronic devices and power onboard computers, lights, audio system, and more. That's also good to know. If you're charging your phones, your devices, then that will also decrease your range too. So this is an example of a drive I did before we did the software update video. So let's go to trip first of all. So I plugged it into the navigation from home to Rodborough Road, which is very close to us. It was a 7.2 kilometer drive. The yellow and green indicates my actual consumption, whereas the gray line indicates what the uh, computer predicted. And as you can see, I'd actually did better than what the computer had predicted or the car's computer had predicted. I consumed 1.7% of my battery. Uh, which was 0.2% less than the trip projection. So yay me. There were times when in yellow when I used more than expected and there were times in green where I did better than what the car predicted as well. 0.9% uh, of the time was due to the driving itself. It was uh, 0.1 less than what the computer predicted. 0.2% was from the climate. 0.5% from elevation and everything else 0.1% as well. So I was charging my phone at the same time, possibly that was what was causing it. So that's interesting. Uh, and I'll just show you rated as well. So this is kind of just general driving without the navigation. Uh, as you can see, the gray line is the EPA or the car's rated projection, uh, just in general, without taking into account any sort of elevation uh, or climate or anything like that uh, in the you know general environment. Uh, that's just like a linear progression from, you know, 
72%, which is what it was at at the beginning, to what it is now, over 13 kilometers. Uh, no bumps and things like that. This is just what the car is, you know, just a straight line linear uh, progression with your battery or your, uh, use with your battery. And then the yellow and green line is uh, my car, well, my driving style for this last 13 kilometers and what I actually consumed. As you can see, I consumed 3.9%. 0.7% more than the car's estimated consumption. So this is really handy because uh, one of the common questions I get asked is why is the range less than what the car has shown in this setting here, for example, why, you know, uh, it's 301 kilometers, why does it vary day to day? Uh, you know, and I always tell them, well, it's based on your driving style, based on the environment, um, based on elevation, and, and now it's vindicated because this is exactly what Tesla is telling us in this explanation here. So. This is a really handy infographic and I'm glad Tesla have put this for uh, new owners now and just owners like myself, which is great. And see from this 4.1% in the last um, you know, little while, in fact, it's gone up because I've been sitting here, uh, driving was 2.4%. Uh, that's what I used, uh, climate 0.8%. And obviously the longer I stay here in this car, uh, then it'll go up as well. Elevation 0.5%, 0.4%, everything else, uh, I guess with charging my phone, etc. And as you can see here, this little bit is quite interesting, this little bit of green. So at the start of this green bit here, there was a steep descent. Uh, it's called the Roseville Bridge, which is uh, near my area. And then I climbed back up that same bridge uh, in this yellow bit here. So as you can see, there is some gain in battery with regenerative braking, but then you obviously lose it back again when you uh, climb up the same area. So it's good to see that, yes, there is regen, but <laughs> obviously it balances out when you uh, climb that same uh, altitude or the same elevation again. And they give you tips as well when you're driving. Going uphill costs 2.2%, going downhill saved 1.7% during this drive. I took a photo during my live drive uh, when it was safe to do so, and there was a bit of a tip here which said, aggressive acceleration consumes more energy, use chill mode to improve efficiency. So you get live tips as you are driving as well. One more thing or two I should add is, uh, you can also look at the energy consumption uh, when the car is parked. And you can see since last charged, I've used 1.2% just with the car parked. And since the last drive, you can see that I've used 0.2% since the last parked. That's because I've been sitting here doing this software update video and uh, it's fairly accurate because the screen time is 0.9%, just showing you the new features and also vehicle standby 0.2%. Uh, so this is a nice way to track, uh, I guess, uh, phantom drain uh, from your car, from this energy consumption screen that's been upgraded. All right, so the next thing I wanna go through is cabin overheat protection. So let's have a look at that. So controls, safety, and then we scroll down here and cabin overheat protection now has approximate activation temperature for you to choose 30 degrees Celsius, 35 Celsius, 40 Celsius. All right, I wanna go through this one now, supercharger additional details. This is a really handy piece of information. Uh, let's go to the nav now and by the way you can now choose uh, a route an alternative route when you are uh, choosing a destination so let's for example go back to uh, epping uh, which is another part of sydney and look at this you can now choose that route or this route uh, or this route here so depending which way you want to go uh, that dollar sign indicates uh, whether a toll road is being used and this is without paying toll so let's see how long that lasts before the route changes or the route recalculates. So probably about four or five seconds there uh, before the route is selected. And that's the amount of time you get to choose an alternative route before that is set for your navigation. All right, I wanna show you now the supercharger improvements and let's have a look at the three superchargers in Sydney currently. So we've got um, Macquarie Park up here in the north. We've got Broadway in the middle of Sydney and then Akirawi down in the south. Let's have a look at uh, Macquarie to start with first. So if I click that, you can see uh, some more information available now. And you've got busy times and the price currently, which is 69 cents per kilowatt hour, and then the idle fees of a dollar per minute. And uh, I don't know exactly what the Y axis is up here. Potentially it could be a number of charges per, per hour or per time unit across uh, the bottom here in the X axis. So this is great because it tells you when are the busy times at Macquarie Park, which is around about now, uh, and then probably later in the afternoon, and obviously, you know, after hours when it's quiet. Uh, so if you want to 
go and charge when it's quiet. That's a really good graphic to know. And then you can pit yourself against other charging locations. So keep that in mind, that's Macquarie Park. And if I uh, go down to Broadway, and uh, I think graphically Broadway seems busier or at least the peaks are higher than Macquarie. As you can see, it peaks around one o'clock here in uh, Broadway. It's 68 cents per kilowatt hour, slightly cheaper. I don't know how Tesla prices their supercharger locations. And then another smaller peak sort of later in the evening when people come back from work, I assume they want to charge their cars if they don't have uh, charging at home. And then obviously later on during the day or overnight, uh, there's uh, less charging being used. Let's compare that to Kirui, which is Sydney's newest one, which is uh, the 250 kilowatt V3 chargers. And uh, if the, the metrics are the same, the y-axis is the same comparing to Macquarie Park and Broadway. So you can see it's much quieter at Kirui um, with the peak at about two o'clock in the afternoon, also 69 cents per kilowatt hour. Let's have a look at some quieter charges. So let's have a look at Tuggera, which is uh, further north on the central coast. As you can see, it's much quieter than the Sydney charges, uh, as is uh, further out west here uh, at Bathurst, very quiet indeed. So, you know, people ask, you know, how, how busy are these charges? As you can see, the city charges are far busier than the regional charges. If I look up here at Port Macquarie, yes, it is busier than say Tuggera, but again, not as busy as Sydney and then uh, McLean doesn't have the information there and uh, neither does Nocro. So obviously it's not available at all charges yet. Tamworth has got information. So we'll see what happens, uh, you know, whether Tesla updates these as time goes on. There he's got information there as well. All right, everyone, that's me, Tesla Tom, thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed this video. That's software update 2022.36.2 with live sentry mode. Until the next ludicrous feed video, Happy charging.